Hi, in this playlist, we are going to talk about 2D arrays. So we are going to start with how to create a 2D array, how to access elements of a 2D array, and how to traverse elements of a 2D array. In traversals, we are going to talk about row-wise traversal, column-wise traversal, and diagonal-wise traversal. After that, in this playlist, we are going to talk about transpose of matrix. In transpose of matrix, we are going to talk about how to create transpose of a given matrix and we'll do an application based on these concepts. After each video, we are going to share notes that we are going to develop in the video. Along with that, I'll give you some practice question. So uh, stay tuned with the video, stay till the end uh, with the video to see those practice questions based on the concepts that we discuss in this video. So let's uh, start with the concept. Let's start with the first video uh, on 2D arrays and let's understand uh, the nuances on 2D arrays. So in 2D arrays, the first thing that we are going to discuss is declaration. In declaration, if you have to create a 2D array, something like this, if you have to create a 2D array of a structure, something like this, then uh, what we have to do is let's quickly count how many rows are there. So there are five rows over here. And how many columns do we have over here? We have six columns. So the declaration or the syntax is going to look something like this. These are the three important parameters that you have to write uh, to declare a 2D array, to create a 2D array. One is what type of data you want to store in each cell of the 2D array. Second is name of the variable name of the 2d array next is number of rows and number of columns so these are the three things that you need to keep whenever you are creating a 2d array the next thing that you have to uh, talk about is the next thing that we have to talk about is is how to access elements so if i want to access this particular element i would have to know its row index and its column index so row indices and column indices, they start from zeroth index. So if I talk about this cell, this is located at second row index and second column index. So to access this, I would have to write something like this. Similarly, if I want to access this part of the 2D array, then I would have to write three comma four. I would be able to access this with the help of three comma four. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about is how to traverse to the 2D array. Before going into the traversals, we just want to quickly talk about uh, the cells at the top right, top left, bottom right and bottom left corners, because these are the cells which are going to define the limit of access of cells. So if I talk about this cell, so this is 0, 0, if I talk about this cell, this is 0, 5. If I talk about this cell, this is 4, 5. If I talk about this cell, this is 4, 0. You cannot go beyond 4, 0. You cannot access 5, 0. Similarly, you cannot go beyond 4, 5 over here or over here. These are the bounds. These are boundaries. If I generalize. Let's say that 2D array that you have created is of size n cross n. Then the top left cell is going to be 0, 0. The top right cell is going to be 0, m minus 1. The bottom right cell is going to be n minus 1, m minus 1. The bottom left cell is going to be n minus 1, 0. Now, these are the boundaries. These are boundaries of a generic 2D matrix, 2D array, which has n cross m, which have n rows and m columns. So now let's try to traverse through the elements of a 2D array. So let's try to talk about all the elements of the second row. So if we want to access all the elements of the second row, let's try to write the indices for them. So the first element would be associated at 2,0. The second element would be associated at 2,1. The next element would be associated at 2,2. The next would be associated at 2,3. And last would be associated at 2,4. If I write them in a generic way, 
so this would be 2,0, 2,1, 2,2, 2, so on and so forth up till the last column which is 2,m minus 1. One thing that you have to notice is when you are accessing elements of a particular row, then the row number is constant and only thing that is variable is column. So if you have to print all the elements of a particular row, so what would be the pseudocode for it? So if you have to print all the elements of a particular row, you would have to do that with the help of a for loop. And the only thing that would be varying over here would be the column number. And column number would be varying from uh, j equal to 0 to all the way up till m minus 1. So I would say j equal to 0, j less than m, j plus plus. Row value is going to be constant. So let's say row number over here is equal to 2. So you can simply print all the elements of the second row by writing array of 2 comma or you can say rather than writing a fixed value of 2, I can just write i over here and I can just write j over here. Right? Over here, I have I will have a fixed value of row. The only thing that is going to vary is the column value. Similarly, I leave it as an exercise for you to write all the elements of a particular column. One thing that you have to notice is when you are writing all the elements of a particular column, then column number is going to be constant. Row number is going to be the variable part. Right? Okay. Similarly, one more thing that we have to do is after finding the print, after printing all the values of a particular row, now let's quickly talk about how to find sum of a particular row. So for finding the sum, we would have to define a variable sum equal to zero. The traversal is going to be similar. So if I am finding sum of all the elements of a particular row, let's say that the particular row is i equal to 2, then the row number is going to be constant. The variable is going to be column indices or column number. Again, the column number is going to vary from j equal to 0 to all the way up till m minus 1. And if we have to find sum of all these elements, we will simply write sum equal to sum plus array of i j. After coming out of the loop, you can return this sum and this will give you sum of all the elements of a particular row. Okay. Similarly, this exercise can be repeated for a particular column as well. Now, this was for a particular row. If you want to traverse the 2D array in a row wise manner, I mean to say that you want to traverse the complete 2D array, but in a row wise manner. What do I mean by row wise manner is for that, let me quickly take an example of a 2D array. So let's say this is the 2D array that is given to me. And over here, let's suppose the elements that are given to you are 1, 4, 9. Over here, you are given 6, a 10. And let's suppose 5 over here. Then there is 7, then there is 8, and then there is 9. You want to traverse the elements in a row wise manner. So first you want to traverse all the elements of the zero row. Then you want to traverse all the elements of the first row, first index row. Then you want to traverse all the elements of the second index row. And let's not just traverse it. Let's have some value associated with each row as well. So let's find row wise sum. So you have to find a sum associated with the zero row. You have to find some associated with the first index row and you have to find the sum associated with the second index row. So what would be the sum associated with the zeroth index? This would be equal to 14. 1 plus 4 plus 9, this is going to be 14. The sum associated with the first row is going to be 6 plus 10 plus 5, it is going to be 21. And finally, it is going to be 7 plus 8 plus 9, it is going to be 24. So, to find row wise sum, what we have to do is we have to traverse all the elements of the zeroth index row. 
then we would have to traverse all the elements of the first index row then we would have to traverse all the elements of the second index row and so on and so forth if we generalize it the last row to be traversed would be n minus 1 so what we have to do is we have to first write a loop so the loop is going to traverse on each and every row so how many rows we have we have rows starting from 0th index all the way up till n minus 1th index. So this is going to be i equal to 0 to all the way up till n minus 1th index. Now for each of the particular row, for each of the particular ith row, we have to find sum of all that element, all the elements of that particular row. We have already done this. We have already done this. We have already found sum of all the elements of a particular row, right? So what we'll do is we'll quickly take the pseudocode from here. And this would be the pseudocode for finding sum of all the elements of a particular row. Okay, so let's copy it over here and let's paste it over here. So let me again highlight this part and let me put it this way. Right. So what this uh, pseudocode has done for us is it has found some of all the elements of that particular column, which is situated at the ith index. Okay. So after coming out of this loop, what we will do is we will print the sum over here. This will give me row wise sum. This will give me some of the ith row. So first we'll print the sum associated with the zeroth row, then we'll print the sum associated with the first row, then with the second row, and so on and so forth. At the end, we'll print the sum associated with n minus 1th row. This is how you will solve and you will find row wise sum. Now, the question that I want to give you is to find column wise sum. So, an exercise uh, based on today's content would be column wise sum. So this is the question that you need to do. This is the to do question. So what would be the question over here? So let me give you an example. And with the help of this example, you will understand it in a much better way. So let's say this is the 2D matrix that is given to you. And in this 2D matrix, let's suppose these are the elements that you have. Let's say that you have one, four, nine. Then you have six, five and ten. And then you have seven, eight and nine. So this time you have to find column wise sum. Sum of the first column or the zeroth index column is going to be 14. Sum of the first index column is going to be nine plus eight. It is 17. Sum of the second index column or the last column is going to be 19 plus nine. It is going to be 28. So your output over here should be 14. Then it should be 17 and then it should be 28. If I talk about time and space complexity of both the approaches or both the questions, either you are doing column wise sum or you are doing row wise sum. In both the cases, one thing that you will see is that you are traversing, you are going through each and every element of the 2D array. And how many elements do you have? Over here, you have n cross m elements. So that's why the time complexity would be big of n cross m. And what would be the space complexity over here? So space complexity for this is going to be big of one because we have not taken an extra array to find solution to this problem. We have taken constant number of variables to solve this problem. You have to solve column wise sum also using the same time and space complexity, right? I hope you would be able to do that. And I hope you have understood everything that we have discussed in this introductory video on 2D arrays. See you in the next video. Thank you.